Once again, everybody, welcome back uh, for week two. Uh, last week, some great information from, from Axel. So he's back to uh, follow up, uh, talk about some, some uh, preparation, uh, tournament, I think, uh, preparation. So I'll hand it over to him and uh, look forward to, to some more very useful information. Thanks, Axel. All right, welcome everybody. So uh, today, you guys, you gotta pay attention. I don't deliver enough information, but what I tell you today, you guys, is absolutely making a difference. You will be on fire if you follow my guidelines for this. It's ridiculously simple. And uh, I talked to um, Coach Ryan and we kind of agreed that I make a spreadsheet out of that eventually, which you guys can uh, get uh, through Rush. I wanna make that club wide. So we talk about today, right? The day before the game, what to eat. Then, you know, the day off the game, before the game, what you eat. Then during the game, what you can do. And then a little bit after the game, what you can do, okay? So in the priority, they are literally almost equal, right? So the most important part is the day before. So let's go quickly back to last week, all right? We talked about carbs. Remember, making a bonfire, big logs is the big carbohydrates like starches, like potatoes, pasta, rice. And then there was the simple, the kindling, which starts the fire, right? Skittles, you know, Russell Wilson, you know, from the <laughs> Seattle Seahawks. Uh, M&Ms, you know, uh, some of our rush coaches have even done gummy beer, you know, like uh, that's like stuff uh, you often have as, as a kindling. So now we're talking the day before game, right? Saturday game, we're going to have that or Sunday game. So 24 hours before. All right. So it takes 20 hours. All right, 20 hours for you when you eat those carbs we need the most, the pasta, the rice, and the potatoes. It takes 20 hours to go from your mouth into the muscle storage, what I talked about the last time, that battery you charge. All right, that energy you use 90% of the time during the game, 20 hours. So if you are carb loading inside of 20 hours, you will not have what you eat available for your body for the game. All right, so now the question is always, how much shall I eat, right? So if a game is on Saturday, you need to carb load on Friday and you need to carb load on Thursday. So here's my recommendations, okay? So you need to do your body weight in pounds times two and a half or half your body weight times five. I'll give you an example, all right? So some 140 pounds of weight, you take half of that, that's 70. Now you take that times five, that's 350. You need to add 350 grams of carbohydrates 20 to 24 hours before the game to carb load. Now we are America here, we're not very metric, right? Grams is metric. So I'll give you an example. Everybody have heard of a cup, right? We always measure in cups. So this is uh, one of those things you often use in baking, right? In one of those measuring cups, there's like, uh, there's two cups in here, right? So it's a pretty big glass of water, so to speak. If you fill one of those with pasta, right? You have two cups. Each cup is about 200 grams worth of carbs, right? So 400 carbs in two cups. So I said like uh, someone with uh, 140 pounds of weight needs to have about a glass and a half of this, all right? Or a little bit more, you know, slightly more, but not quite full glass. So guys, so again, take your body weight in half. Everybody can do the math right now, right? So pounds in half and then times five. And that's the amount of grams you need to eat. Now, remember, a cup of pasta, potato, and rice is about 200 grams. So if you forgot that, no worries. Ryan has my email address. You can send me that, and I can guide you through on this. But that's how simple it is. Now, when you have a plate you eat, that's a good chunk of noodles. All right, so on the, on the carb loading day, you eat a noodle or brown rice or whole wheat pasta or, you know, quality whole wheat bread worth of carbohydrates. All right, that's what you need to do. Now, you may have heard that triathletes, I was a triathlete once, right, and marathon runners, they load carb load for two, three days. And that might be necessary. And the simple reason is because even coaches make mistakes. You know what the pros do? They wind down the intensity of the training prior to a game a little bit, right? They're how hard you train, how long you train, and they increase the carbohydrate intake. But if your practice is on Tuesdays, Thursdays, or that's even worse, Wednesday, Fridays, and you have a Saturday game, and your coach hammers a hard session on Friday out, 
you have used all that game cards and you have no chance to carb load. So often because of that, it is if you have the Friday practice or the Thursday practices, I recommend to spend Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday on carb loading the way I just described, right? With the body weight times half. So basically the rule is five grams of carbohydrates for every two pounds of body weight. That's basically the rule. All right. So again, you need to talk to your coach. I talk to the coaches now after this today, right? And I tell her, listen, you can't train hard on Friday and expect the kids to have the energy on Saturday to win a game. So that's something you got to understand. So carb loading does typically only need to be 24 hours before. But if you constantly keep training, like triathletes and, and marathon runners always are a little bit in training. So they carb load even during the week before because they still have some training going on. All right. So this is pretty simple, right? Now, also good advice. A big steak is not a good pre-day game meal, right? Because it takes 48 to 72 hours, right? That's two to four days worth of time to digest the steak, All right? So meaning if on Friday night you eat a steak, that is still even in your stomach on the Sunday night final game. It might be even in your stomach on the Monday at a final when you have a tournament. And of course, we all make the final. All right. So think about that. So lean protein, of course, I talked about that last time. Eat the chicken, eat the turkey. Their body can digest that much quicker. All right. And vegetables. So a pre game day meal 24 hours before or slightly before that, you know, so that is mostly pasta and then a little bit of lean protein and lots of vegetables. OK, that's your and then obviously rehydrate with water. That's your pregame meal. All right, so now day off the competition. Okay, guys, listen carefully. Here's a funny story of mine, right? So I kind of uh, am a coach for 15 years now. And when I started the first five years, I thought I had a team which stunk in the morning. All right, when we had an 8 a.m. tournament game, my boys were just not there, right? They were like really slow. They lost the one we once And I'm like, I saw nothing what I see in practice when they come after school to practice and I'm like, yoo -hoo! Let's go. So I'm like, what is going on with these? I always told the parents, get them earlier to bed and stuff like that. And then one day, a nutritionist came to me and said, talk, talk, talk. Hey, I heard you saying your team is not a morning team. What do you do with nutrition? I'm like, well, I asked them to eat a healthy breakfast. Well, what do you ask them to eat? You know what I said at that time? Uh, scrambled eggs and, uh, and uh, you know, whole wheat toast and some yogurt and bananas. So what, they, what I didn't understand is this. You, you cannot eat inside of an hour of a game, all right? When you eat inside of one hour of your game, so let's say Saturday morning, you arrived at the hotel, you know, on Friday for a tournament, or if you have a season game, early morning, your, your parents get you out there. You can, let's say the game is at eight or nine, you cannot eat the hour before. And for the simple reason is, when we digest, we re digest, we release a couple of hormones, insulin, and another one is called serotonin. Both of them, are not conducive for athletes. If insulin is in your body, it takes all the sugar out of your blood and now you turn low in sugar and then you're really slow and you're feeling really crappy. And serotonin helps your body to calm down and digest. Now, when you are in a game, you don't want to calm down and digest. You want to be wild and furious. All right, so no eating, and I mean nothing. And in the hour before the game, that's a little bit an exception, but for now, keep that in mind. So what do you do if you have an 8 a.m. game on a tournament? Unfortunately, guys, you have to get up early. You have to get up at 6, have breakfast at 6.30 and be done by 7 with it. What do you eat on that day? I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, fruits, cereal, waffles, pancakes, yogurts, stuff like that. All right, so again, carbohydrates, right? So those are often these uh, sweeter ones. So I told you that's like the kindling, starting the day with a good fire. All right, do not eat the eggs. That's protein, takes 24 hours to digest. Do not eat the steak. Do not eat the sausage. Do not eat the turkey. Do not eat the potatoes. Sorry that I burst the bubble for some of you on this one. But what I'm talking about today, I just talked to Coach Ryan. I downloaded from the last Bayern Munich Champions League game the exact meal plan from Lewandowski. Or here in Germany, we call him Lewandowski. All right, so listen, this guy eats exactly like I'm just explaining, to the T with a clock in his hand. He knows exactly when to eat and when not to eat. So again, you guys, no food inside of an hour before the game. 
not even the banana on the right over. Okay. I mean, really no food. And before that, you have your breakfast that you kind of uh, have enough in your stomach and later on some energy. All right. So everybody get that? Yes, please. Hopefully. I don't see you. Most cameras are off, but please shake your head. So next. All right. Now we come to the field. All right. This is where now the good Gatorade comes in. Gatorade comes actually from the, Gator, from the Gators. That's a football team in Florida. And the coach figured out that he has warm, sugary water. All right. His players can run a little longer and a little harder. All right. He, he basically patented that, started you know, making a drink on his own, called it Gatorade. Right. The Gators, the, the football team was, was, was the inventor of Gatorade. And what it does, it basically infuses you quickly with sugar. But just shortly before your game, please. Because that sugar will be in your blood and that your muscle can take immediately for energy. But really, just before the game, right? Again, you don't eat anything solid or high sugar on the way over to the game. But after warm-up, you can open the Gatorade battle and, uh, bottle and do like two, three gulps. Also, at halftime, yes, liquid or very short-chain sugar. So again, Skittles, you know, it's a good example. Halftime snack of Russell Wilson. Uh, what's not going to work, I see it all the time, the orange slices, right? How many of people had the parent bring the orange slices at halftime? Not enough sugar, takes too long to break it down, lots of fiber in there, not going to be there, yeah? You, you got to have that energy available in the car on the way home. That's not when you need it, all right? So again, guys, uh, you know, drink, um, you know, uh, these high energy drink, not high, yeah, the, the high sugary drinks, Gatorade Powerade, not the diet version, not the zeros, the real deal, your body will burn all that sugar during the game, okay? You don't have to worry. It doesn't make you fat. It doesn't make you big, all right? There's no outcome of this. Just don't make that your drink of choice on days where you don't work out, right? It's not a school drink. A Gatorade was made for the Gators. It's an athletic drink, all right? So keep that in mind. So now we're going to, uh, let's see my notes here. I talked about that. Um, so now we're going to go to... Uh, Post game eating. So here's a pickle. So uh, when you go to tournaments, you know how it goes, right? You have a game on Saturday morning. You have a game on Saturday afternoon. You have a game on Sunday mid morning, sometimes early morning. So how do you deal with the carb loading on that, right? So you burned in your first game through all these wonderful carbs. You carb loaded the 24 hours before. Now you have replenished some of them with, uh, you know, a little bit with breakfast and a little bit with Gatorades. But now you have a game again and you don't have 20 hours time again because your game is five hours later or three hours later or two hours later. So this is now the lunch question, right? So now you go to lunch. So again, guys, obviously, you know, uh, if you eat a lot inside of one hour, right? You cannot eat an hour before the game. So if you have a 9 a.m. game, it goes to, let's say, uh, 10, 30, 11. Let's say you have a 1 p.m. game. You need to eat right away after game number one. Do not wait until you're sitting there an hour before the game. Same principle. Not even for the second and third game. Do not eat an hour before inside of the hour before the game. So now doing those meals, you cannot carb load. Remember, it takes 20 hours. So if you go after game one and go to an Italian restaurant and down, you know, put down like an uh, uh, fettuccine Alfredo, that's going to sit heavy in your stomach. OK, so you need to add light and refuel with water. And, uh, you know, the, the light means sandwiches okay so that's a subway sandwich is a good stuff idea i'm actually supportive of that one salads are good granola bars um you know fruits uh snacks uh, my favorite uh, so my uh, my son right my older son who's a college player he loves trail mix perfect in between game meal snack okay perfect perfect and you can spice them up with your favorite little chocolate candy and stuff like that again a little sugar is okay as long as not inside of 60 minutes of the game. So that's the hardest part, right? So now again, you need to start early with refueling um, on when the game, the second game starts, during the game, have Gatorade bottles, right? Person is injured, quickly go to the sideline. You see in football games all the time, right? Someone's injured, they all go and there's this water boy and he hands out the bottles and in these bottles is the sugary drink. That's what they do. You see that even in soccer games nowadays, right? When there's injury breaks. So, um, you know, uh, refuel, right? The goalies have it easy. They put it behind the net. But field players, you need to, when, uh, when there's a break in the game, you know, you can't leave the field. Got to go to the sideline. 
and ask for the drink and hopefully your coach or the subs uh, reach the bottle for you have a quick sip. Uh, the second game is the hardest one, right? So that's because you have not your muscle stored with glycogen. That's why professionals, right, World Cup and European Cup and all these kind of tournaments do not have two games a day, right? Because they want their athletes 100% fresh. So uh, when you go now home on um, day one, right, so you had two games and your next game is in the morning. Again, you can't carb load, right? So again, the pasta on a Saturday night, team dinner, coaches often think like, hey, guys, yeah, um, eat, eat well. And so everybody orders pasta. But remember, it takes 20 hours. Again, you have that energy available after the game. So a little bit of pasta, the rules I uh, mentioned last week, a lot of vegetables, lean protein, and lots of rehydration is the way to go. So regular meal, what could be it? Uh, so for example, if wraps are good for dinner, uh, obviously something with some potatoes, not necessarily fried potatoes, but um, maybe roasted potatoes, uh, vegetables, uh, a small steak is okay. It'll be fine. It doesn't sit heavy in the stomach, but better would be a chicken sandwich or turkey sandwich. Um, salads with seafood in it, right? So those things go a long way on these um, on these uh, first day of the tournament meals. Again, a little bit of pasta or rice or bread is okay, but you do not need to do that five gram per two pounds of body weight rule on Saturday night. Again, you will not be able to store all that carbs. So generally speaking, if you eat too much on a Saturday night in a tournament on Sunday morning, your game will be very slow. And that is the number one mistake I've seen the big boys having done here with, uh, uh, with Rush. All right. I consulted on a lot of teams. You know, again, I mentioned last week, Greg Comstone, his boys played in the National League. That's a huge honor. You got to really qualify for that hard. You got to win your division and, and even get recommended. And so we went to those tournaments and, and the meals were, pla were planned. And then people ate burgers and French fries. And I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, ah. You know, like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. This is really the day you, you go there. You know, parents spend hundreds of dollars to get you in the hotel room and fly and drive and all this kind of stuff. And then you eat a burger and, and you basically reduce yourself to half your potential athletically. All right. So, guys, it is super important to have this all down. So the best way to do it is plan. All the professionals in the world, right? We want to come as close as possible to the, to the, uh, to the professionals. Plan it. Once your game schedule is out, which is usually a week before the tournament, you know when the games are, what the commuting times are, where your hotel is, what stores, what resources you have, supermarkets, what you might you need to bring because you don't have anything nearby, and so on. And then lay out a meal plan. Doesn't need to be perfect, but you should have a plan. This way, it's not like, Mom, Dad, what are we going to do for lunch? I'm hungry. And so mom and dad doing their duty now. They get you somewhere. Oh, look at that. They go on their phone. They find something. Before you know it, you had a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. And you're going to be a rock later, okay? Fastest kid on the field is now rock. Rocks don't move. All right? So, guys, your parents are not nutritionists. They're actually not sitting here. Maybe some parents are sitting here. But most parents don't. All right? They get you food. They want to treat you. They give you the favorite food. That's not what you need. All right? So, you need to learn to find out what you like, what is healthy, okay? So, and you need to, you need to make a list and, and write it out. It is not rocket science, but here's what I promise you guys, okay? My email is out there, axel at ctrushsoccer.com. Axel, like Axel Rose, right? A-X-E-L, rear axle, front axle. So guys, send me an email, ask me the question. I can send you a couple of sample meal plans if you want to, stuff like that, okay? And then you're like, oh, okay, I can do that. And then you learn a little bit about it. And by the time you guys are college age or, you know, like who elite, you know, like high school age and varsity and stuff like that, you rock the house. All right. right? So the rules were really not rocket science today, weren't they? All right. Particularly the carb loading. And remember the one hour rule before the game. That is something you really got to get in your head. I see it all the time. So last time I checked that almost every single one on the team and I asked, had in an early morning game, breakfast inside of an hour of that game. You know, it's a 20-minute drive from the hotel to the game. So you're like, okay, we need to leave there. Yeah, 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 you know, coach wakes up. So everybody has uh, something in the car or Dunkin' Donuts, right? I see it all Dunkin' Donuts. That's great healthy food. Ooh. 
you know? So, I mean, maybe there's a banana, but no donuts, you know, bagels are pretty heavy, you know, they're not good for inside an hour. So guys, sorry, I hate, I burst the bubble a little bit right there, but it's really fun to play soccer with tremendous energy, right? It's fun. I mean, it really is awesome when you let your opponent the dust because he had, he had the waffles in the car on the way over. You smile, bye. All right, that's what you want to do. So guys, I open up to question. Shoot, unmute yourself and ask me a question if you have one. Excellent, that's tremendous. I, I actually have a question. Awesome, shoot. So when I, in the, in the latter stages of my playing days, that's when Gatorade started coming out. You talk about Skittles and gummy bears, those little chews, are those just, those are just as good, right? Perfect, yep. So they make those little chews like, for like you know, just before the game and halftime. Yeah. Yep. Those go, those are great. All these are basically simple, simple sugar. They are already pre-digested, so to speak, really yeah. tiny molecules. They go in your body, intestines absorb them with a little liquid, whoop, they're right in your bloodstream, and then their body can grab it, right? So it's pretty awesome. And actually, by the way, you guys, these little snacks go a long way when you sit in a three-hour exam at high school or college exams, all right? When you have the long exams, because your brain doesn't work much different than your muscle. It needs sugar. All right. And when you're running low after an hour in a math exam and you start to steam, you're losing focus. A little bit of a, a, a quick sugar uh, jolt goes a long way. I'm not saying like bring necessarily like three mega bags of M&Ms, but, you know, a little bit, a handful of M&Ms or Skittles or, you know, what you just mentioned uh, goes a long way. Wow. What advice? We're going to have some uh, 1600s flying off the board here for CT Rush SAT. Questions, anybody? Feel free if you don't want to uh, ask, just type them in the comments and I can pass yep. on. So. And you know, that might not come now. The question, shoot me an email if you need to. Uh, by the way, if you read this up, you will find almost every website agreeing with a similar style, particular in youth sports of carb loading and rules, okay? This, uh, for example, my rules are identical, and Lewandowski's rules are identical with the US youth soccer recommendations, right? So absolutely spot on. All right, I see a chat question there. Uh, when measuring the pasta, do you measure it uncooked, pasta cooked? Awesome question. Cooked, please. Cooked, please. All oh, right, yeah. because it adds a lot of water weight and stuff like that, and we're going to make it uh, wet, it's called, right? Not dry, but wet. Awesome question. I was thinking about that all day. Didn't have the answer. I had to look it up. <laughs> That's a great question. It's really a good question. Some smart yeah. cookie there. Let's see. Is there something else? There's two. Bam, let's see. Um, bum, 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 bum. Nope, nope. No questions. It's a lot of good information. We are uh, very fortunate to have uh, Axel as a resource at CT Rush. So feel free. Yep. So, uh, guys, I think I made it pretty clear simple rules, and you will probably forget them. And that's why I make the spreadsheet and you get it. And hopefully, um, I will talk to the coaches. I talked to Ed, I talked to Greg, talk to all the high ups. And hope that every coach gets a sheet like that in the hand. And then before tournament, you hand it out and you guys remember that it's important. Can you please repeat your email? Axel, A-X-E-L, at ctrushsoccer.com, right? So the usual coaches, ctrushsoccer.com yeah. is for all coaches what we have to use now. And again, Axel is simple. simple. It's only one, I guess, around in CT Rush, A-X-E-L. It would be my pleasure and give me about 24 hours to respond because I get a lot of questions. Uh, Kaylee, good, good questions. We will also, uh, I posted last week's video on YouTube. I'm going to, I'm recording this one. I'm going to post this one as well. And we will send it out to the club. We will add Axel's. I'll be sure to put it, I'll put a little clip in there with, with Axel's uh, email in the credits uh, in the beginning of the videos. So we'll I'm there. looking here at uh, all the names because not all of you have uh pictures out there and i want to give you a girl power guys i see uh i see about three quarters here a girl team members and then there's uh the minority is the boys oh man the boys eat the burgers and are slow and the girls yeah. are gone Easy. i love it so, uh, so we have a question to you what's a good game day breakfast all right, good. Um, depends on what you like, right? So, for example, ideal is you go down, you have a you. Uh, so again, uh, two three hours before the game, um, you gotta have a, a a juice, right? Everybody likes a juice, um, orange juice. You have a little yogurt, right? Like maybe one of those uh, uh, Greek yogurts, right? They're pretty good, 150 calories, a uh, little protein, little carbs in there. 
Uh, Got to make yourself waffle. You know, the automatic waffle makers, they're good. Uh, you can have a half a bagel. That's fine. Don't eat a full. They're often like humongous, like tires. Half of them is good. Uh, you can have these pastries, actually, believe it or not. Uh, you can have toast. Um, you can have jam. Um, let's see what else is out there. What's typically on a breakfast bar? Um, blah, 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 blah. Did I hit it? So again, not the not the eggs, not the meats, not the uh, all the stuff which is in these heated things. You know, these little heater. Uh, mostly, what's from the from the cold bar. Uh, granola bars are good, fine. Fruit, yeah, all kinds of fruit, banana, apples, you know, chunk them down, chug them down, right? So they're really good. All right, so we what are good daily meals? Oh, wait a minute. Um, could we have avocado best before so again for breakfast? Oh. Uh, avocado is a, is a good, a good, good vegetable, but it's fatty, right? So it has a lot of fat, good fat, just pointing out. Don't think bad fat, fat's not all bad. It takes a long time for your body to digest. So avocado is not a good pre... Uh, so meaning the avocado is probably not going to sit in your stomach like a rock, but the energy from the avocado will literally be not available when you play. So not a, not a good choice. Uh, what are good daily meals? All right, I, gi I give you a couple of examples. Uh, so um, Max yesterday had a sweet potato, like the baked potato, right? So a whole sweet potato and we microwaved it and cut it open and serve it with a little butter and a little salt, like a, like a baked potato in a steak restaurant, right? So a sweet potato, he had like about uh, two cups of broccoli and about six ounces of chicken breast strips cooked in a pan. Uh, another one is, uh, so again, always look for the veggies, right? So the veggies, at least, um, you know, a quarter, uh, so a quarter to half of your plate. Uh, you can do broccolis, you can do asparagus, you can do green beans, uh, whatever vegetable you like. Uh, side salads, pretty awesome. Um, so uh, good meals are red meats, but again, uh, re remember, give it due time and don't ch chuck down these huge, right? So when I came to America, I couldn't believe the size some steaks and pizzas were, you know, it's like in Germany, they're also tiny. And here like a uh, six ounce is what we eat in Germany, right? And here you get always a choice of eight and 12 and 16 ounce. That's too much, right? You don't need to, it fills your stomach. It's a lot of digestive stress. Uh, again, uh, starches wise, I love to recommend brown rice, classic Japanese rice, the sticky one, right? Um, the, um, uh, those are good choices. Good breads, you know, good bread means it's done with some whole wheat component. Everything which is white is usually bleached and stripped out of it. It's like our milk, right? The milk comes from a cow and we take everything out of it. We, we heat it up that everything which was organic is gone. Then we press it through a filter that everything else which was left is gone. And then we put it in a bottle and then we add vitamin and other things, calcium back in and charge extra $2, which in originally it was already in there. And that's what we do nowadays to make food look better and to have it last longer. We're going to, uh, we're going to process it. So everything, whatever comes from your plate on your plate is out of a package has usually more chemicals than your body needs. So if you need to rip it open, you know, that, that means it's probably not really as nutritious as the produce aisle in the supermarket or like a quality baked bread or like the good pasta. Again, white pasta, same thing. They bleach it, they drip, they make things out of it in order to make it look white. For some reason, someone came up back then that white is the color which we need to have. Uh, you know, whole wheat pasta is a little dark brown or light brown and it, it can taste just the same. It's a little different texture. Uh, flavors should be come from herbs and from good quality oils rather than from salt and sugar. That's the recommendations, right? Salt and sugar are, are good, but too much salt takes water out of your cells and then you're dehydrated. So low salt diets are better for athletes. And uh, so, you know, use herbs, Italian seasoning and, you know, like all these wonderful things in the spice aisle. And, you know, you know those who like Thai food or Chinese food, they do a lot of uh, spices and it's very, uh, very good, pleasant experience. Awesome. I have, I have a question, Axel. Sure. So we've talked a lot about breakfast in, in preparation for those early games, which Absolutely. is important for tournaments. But I talk a lot with my high school kids. There's a lot of high school kids on here. What about that? Those, you know, late afternoon, evening games, critical games where you want to maximize your performance, make sure you're at your best. Yep. How would that change your uh, preparation in terms of, you know, whole day of food versus, you know, just preparing for an early game. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, so quality quality wise, um, so uh, you know, like for high school, you have 90 minute games, that's a long time. It will be impossible to restack your glycogen, right? So the muscle glycogen is gone. So it means uh, you need to first of all have make sure again that preferably close to the first game, not so much close to the second game, you so have a lot about, sorry to interrupt, just just like a regular you know, mat one game, one day match. Uh, oh, okay. In a, in a weekend, you know, a big game, yep. just, just one, one day, not a tournament, just preparation for, you yep. know, one game, but it's in late afternoon, evening time, you know? Okay. So let's say it's a 4 PM game. Okay. So 24 hours before, so let's say Saturday, 4 PM, 24 hours before is 4 PM Friday. All right. So it may be an early dinner, uh, for cup loading on that one. All right. So that would be a good one. Right. So again, there you have it. Uh, again, um, so because not everybody is able to eat these two cups in one portion, right? The two cups of, or like, you know, the amount I recommended five grams per every two pounds of body weight. So not everybody is able to eat that in one meal. So maybe have a good cup that like remember I gave the 24 to 48 hour window. So have the lunch and the dinner distributed a little pasta here, a little pasta there. And now you had or a little brown rice there and a little pasta there. And then you have the loading effect as well. It doesn't need to come down in one chunk, but do the math. All right. So the hard part is the morning games, right? If you have a 7 a.m. game, 24 hours before 7 a.m., who the heck eats like two cups of pasta for breakfast, right? So that's a problem. So that's why I gave you the 48-hour window because you can do it the night before. That's where the, the big meal comes. And then the day before, you know, the, the 24 hours before, you maybe have another lunch with a little bit more pasta, okay? So there, there it works. Um, but again... Uh, you know, it takes 20 hours to digest. So you need to often have the 48 hour windows. And that is the hard time when, and that's really critical, believe it or not in the world cup, right. For women and men, um, coaches look at that. They hate the games, which mess with the eating schedule. So because their advisors, particularly the nutritionists are saying, Hey, no, 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 no. You know, they're going to come over. They're going to eat. They're still okay. biorhythm in Germany and they have a week to acclimate. No, I'm not telling you. So that is what they need to do, right? So they are complaining about it and games are selected often by teams based on, the, on that timing. So it's quite interesting. That's great stuff. And there's, so just one more question was uh, after game meals. So to yeah. replenish. So after game meals, so uh, what I do, I'm a personal trainer. So I have a lot of people who lift really, um, so I have actually right now a lot of soccer players. A lot of you are training hard to get faster, explosive muscle mass, stuff like that. So hard training sessions, similar like a game, they're often an hour long and you waste a lot of energy. So your body needs food inside of two hours of that to regenerate quickly. Of that, you need ideally uh, three to 500 calories, right? And of this 60% come from carbs and 40% from protein. So you can actually buy online now, they call recovery shakes. You can buy them. They're like uh, protein shakes, but for recovery. And they are like in that percentage, right? So that's actually 60, 40. Uh, but again, if you go to, uh, uh, you know, um, let's say you make your own sandwich and there's like two slices of a whole wheat bread, uh, that's probably 300 calories, you know, about 200 to 300 calories in there. That's carbohydrates, right? So, and then uh, you put like, uh, there's some turkey in there. Right. And some vegetable, vegetable as protein, right. That maybe where the avocado comes in or broccoli or something like that with it. Now you have the protein there as well. And uh, maybe you eat later a protein bar and then you have the perfect recovery. So recovery is very important. A lot of people don't eat close enough to their hard workout session. And then the body is deprived and it starts breaking down emergency resources. That's what you don't want. All right. It's a little bit an emergency. Your body is like, Oh my God, he was running away from danger. No, I played soccer for 90 minutes, but I try to survive and I have no food. So I'm going to shut metabolism down and I'm going to restore energy out of my own resources. And that's not a good situation for an athlete, right? An athlete wants to eat, train, eat, train, sleep, eat, train, eat, train, sleep. All right? That's how it goes. That's your life. And in between a school, their parents might disagree, but that's what they do. You know, my coach in high school said, eat right, sleep right, and play right. That's the, th that's the three things. He said in that order, eat right, sleep right, play right. So uh, just keep that in mind, you guys. Uh, that's uh, honestly fantastic stuff, Axel. Uh, truly appreciate it. I think that's it. Uh, once again, thank you so much for your time. We are 
grateful for it. Um, thankful to have you as a part of our club and, and for taking the time to come on here with us. Hey, you guys are absolutely awesome. Everybody who was here tonight, thank you. One player at a time. Please do me the favor. Talk to your teammates about it, right? Peer pressure and peer influence is huge. Some of you are leaders on your team. Talk about that. Not necessarily tell them what to do. Tell them, hey, I did that seminar, you know, with Coach Ryan, and we learned about nutrition, and, you know, I'm starting to do this and that, you know? And then they're like, well, if she does it, maybe I'll do it, right? Okay. So it's like really peer pressure goes a long way. You, we all know it, right? Everybody has an iPhone, peer pressure. Everybody has, you know, we do a lot of things because of our friends. So influence your team. It, it's worth it. Imagine a whole team absolutely ready to rock and roll, all the glycogen in the muscle, bang, fall, and you go out of the field and you hammer away and you go away and you, you know, match your nutrition with your skill from Rush and you have a perfect storm. So thanks, guys. It was a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you so much, Axel. Have a, a fantastic night. We'll see you soon. All right.